Welcome to Trash Imagination, a podcast about reimagining trash. I'm Carla Brown. In today's episode, we're going to talk about Halloween decorations made from recycled materials. Now, last October, I did an episode on my many Halloween costumes made from recycled materials. So if that's your focus right now, go check out that episode. Now, the biggest resource for today's episode will be the Trash Imagination Pinterest board, and you can go check that out in the show notes. Of course, there are a million Halloween decorations out there in the world, but if you pay attention, you'll notice that most involve non-recycled materials. So I'm trying to pull together just the ones that use recycled materials, and I'm also trying to avoid materials that you would might use as you're making the decorations that are not great for the environment environment such as balloons, spray paint, or glow sticks. So I'm going to share the ideas that I've gathered organized into four categories. The first is candy bowls. The second is decorations that you might put in trees or shrubs. The third category are things you might put on your front porch or your front door. And then the last one are decorations that you might have only for an indoor party. And these are different from the front porch items because maybe they're a little bit lightweight, so they might blow away, or they take a lot of work to make, so you wouldn't want to leave them out where people might vandalize them. So, But you could put some of those items out on the front porch on Halloween night when you're going in and out of the door. So let's start with Halloween candy bowls. So my favorite decoration in this category is one designed by the blog called The Long Thread. Ellen Baker makes papier-mâché bowls from paper bags. One is painted orange and one is painted white. So one's a pumpkin, one is a ghost face. And she suggests that you could also glue on orange or white tissue paper instead of painting the papier mache. To make the bowl shape, she uses an actual pumpkin, the bottom of the pumpkin, obviously, where there is no stem. Now, Jodi Kahn made a candy bowl from candy wrappers. She irons the wrappers flat, and then she mod podges them onto a bowl shape. And then when it dries, it's an actual bowl made out of candy wrappers. And then another crafter glued them to a recycled pail. Now, Sadie Season Goods, she, you're going to hear her name over and over again in this episode because she makes a lot of wonderful Halloween decorations from recycled materials. She made a candy bowl from a small bucket kind of thing. She covered it with a white sheet, so it kind of looked like the bucket was a ghost. And then she put the candy in the top where the bucket is. And the, the sheet drapes down from the, the top of the bucket, and then she added eyes and a nose. I saw another candy bowl that looks like a Frankenstein's head, and it's made from a green two-liter soda bottle. And uh, another type of candy bowl that is made from a rectangular juice container, it's also a Frankenstein head. And this involves, uh, you stand up the juice container and you cut out and the bottom half of the front of the container, a really big mouth shape. And then you paint the juice container, maybe green and make it a Frankenstein head or silver and make it a robot head, uh, that kind of thing. So the, the cans reach into the big mouth at the front of the container in the front of the container to get out the candy. So next I'm going to talk about Halloween decorations that are foliage based for those for the trees or shrubs in your yard. Now, the classic tree-based decoration is a skeleton made from recycled plastic milk jugs. Now, I grew up in Canada where we don't have plastic milk jugs, but when I moved to the United States, I saw this was very common. So this was really only for places where you could get those kinds of jugs. And I will link to a tutorial by the Houston Museum of Natural Science because I would think a Museum of Natural Science would make the most realistic looking skeleton. So the way this craft works is you use one jug for the head or skull of the skeleton and you cut out the eyes and the teeth and stuff. Use one for the rib cage and then you use a few more jugs to make the legs, feet, arms, and hands. And these just hang down and it looks really cool. Now, here's another decoration you can make to go outside. You use a broken ceiling fan. I don't know if you've ever had one of these, but it's not easy to recycle these because they're a mixture of metal and plastic. 
I guess I'll have to do a future podcast episode on ceiling fans. But Sadie Season Good, she took the blade from a defunct ceiling fan and she cut each blade into two pieces. And the way she cuts them, it made two ghost shapes. And in her case, her ceiling fan blades were already white, so they were already very ghost like. But if yours were not, you could paint them. And then she used clear monofilament thread to hang the ghosts so it looked like they were really floating. You can also make some cute ghost wind socks that you could hang from some tree branches from recycled cans. This involves painting the cans white, then turning them upside down, painting on some black eyes and a mouth, and then adding strips of white fabric scraps hanging down from the can. A popular Halloween craft that people put in trees is a giant rope spider web. I recommend using rope over yarn so it's more visible at night. And you need to be really sure that you don't tie the web across a space where kids might run into it as they go from house to house trick-or-treating. Now, a great way to tie the web is to actually make it across your kitchen table and then carry it outside and put it on your tree. I will link to a step-by-step tutorial in the show notes. And if you're wondering where you're gonna find a giant spider to put in your web. You might remember I made a spider web costume last uh, year I talked about it and I made the web out of hundreds of six pack rings and tent poles. Well, I made the spider for that costume out of those black plastic trays found in frozen dinners. Now, the next type of Halloween decoration I'm going to talk about are those that would go on your front porch. So these are inexpensive and heavy enough that they wouldn't blow away. And so you could have them on your porch for the weeks leading up to Halloween. So I mentioned a skeleton made from recycled milk jugs. Another use of milk jugs involves lining them up and adding ghost faces on them with black paint or black marker and then stringing white holiday lights inside. So it looks like a line of little ghosts on your front porch. And you can download a bunch of face templates in the show notes. There's an Instructables tutorial that shows how to make realistic skulls from recycled milk jugs. Now, this is actually what I would call really next level creative reuse because you need to have a heat gun, which is kind of an awesome tool, but not everybody has it. This requires also owning a resin skull that you use as a base. So that was <laughs> that makes this craft kind of tricky. You have to have, to have those two items and it involves melting the milk jugs over the resin skull. So it really is an effective and awesome looking craft in the end, but a lot of work. Another thing you can do with string lights involves plastic K-cups, like those uh, little coffee cups that you use with Keurig coffee makers. You take the white ones and you draw on a ghost face and then attach one to each light. Now, as an aside, I made a whole zebra costume from black and white K-cups, and you can hear about that in my episode from a year ago on costumes. Now, have you noticed that there are some really big orange plastic jugs used by a certain brand of liquid laundry detergent? Now, if you remove the labels, you can use those jugs to make a stylized pumpkin. Now, unfortunately, those labels can be very difficult to remove without some serious chemicals such as acetone. So I would love to hear if you have found a way to remove them in a way that is less toxic. So I know there are furniture strippers that are not not uh, really toxic. So I haven't tried that yet. And I would love to hear your advice on it. Now, last year, I made a Halloween wreath from old black socks. I cut some socks into strips and then I tied them one by one on a metal circle. This used up a whole bunch of old socks and it looked quite creepy. And I put little Halloween things like a little spider, little decorations inside that black spiky wreath. And I hung it on the front of my house. It looked very cool. My daughter made a wonderful nail and thread skull decoration on a large piece of wood that I salvaged from the trash. I don't know if you've seen these nail and thread crafts. They're quite popular. So we got the idea from a blog called A Beautiful Mess. And the wood was about three feet square. We painted it black and then we printed a really huge image of a skull on a bunch of sheets of paper. Then my daughter, she tapped in finishing nails all along the lines of the skull. And then she connected all the nails with white thread. And the final result is really impressive. 
Have you ever made a luminaria from a recycled metal can? It's great practice in using a hammer and nail if you want a fun craft to do with some kids. So you can fill a can with water and freeze it into a solid chunk of ice. And then you put the can on a table with a towel underneath to protect the table. And you draw a design on the can with a marker. Or you could print out a design and tape it onto the can and the kids can tap the nails right through the paper. So once they've tapped the nails through, they're going to just take one nail and make a bunch of holes in the design. Then you let the ice melt and you put a candle inside. And some examples that are up on my Pinterest board are like the words trick or treat or like boo. And some people paint the cans orange or black for Halloween. And coffee cans can work extra well for this craft because they are larger and stronger than other metal cans. Now, my local thrift store had a volunteer who used to fix up all the donated Barbies to make them more presentable and sellable. But if you have Barbies that are beyond fixing, you can make them into zombie Barbies. This idea comes from the blog Crafts from Amanda. This is a great craft to do with your older children who are done with their Barbies and you haven't found someone who wants them. They get to paint the Barbies with gray and brown and white paint. They get to tease their hair and they get to paint the clothes or dye the clothes and splatter red paint on them and you can set up a whole zombie display on your porch. Crafts by Amanda has another great craft which involves painting monster faces on rocks with glow-in-the-dark puffy paint. This one is definitely on my to-do list. If you want to get really ambitious with your outdoor decorations, there are options that involve recycling wood pallets. You can build spooky Halloween fences and graveyards from recycled wood pallets, as well as directional signage with signs pointing left and right saying things like Dracula Drive or Halloween Highway or Wicked Witch Way. Now, the last type of Halloween decorations I'll talk about are those that you might only have indoors at a party or you might put them on the front porch on Halloween night. A lot of these decorations could also be good activity ideas for a Halloween party if you host a party with people who like to make crafts. So here's a bunch of Sadie Season Goods crafts. The first one is she took a bunch of old figurines and she painted them black and she gave them red eyes and they looked haunted. This is such a great idea since there are just too many knickknacks in the world. And it's especially effective when she used figurines that were supposedly cute, like a teddy bear or a little girl with ponytails. Another Sadie Season Good craft is a spider's web made from a recycled doily. You stretch the doily on an embroidery hoop and you can add a spider and even let that spider hang down from the web by a string. And our last Sadie Season Good craft involves those frosted glass light covers that you might see in a bathroom covering the light bulb. If you go to a place like a Habitat for Humanity Restore, you can get them really cheap. And Sadie shows how the glass light covers look like ghosts when they're sitting on a shelf if you add eyes and a nose. Now she puts glow sticks inside, but you could string reusable plug-in lights. The blog Just Crafty Enough made a graveyard terrarium. This is a variation on a popular craft which involves a recycled glass jar with a little scene inside and usually some small plants. For this craft, you put a dried out branch that looks like a dead tree, a little gravestone made from Sculpey, and some dried hay along the bottom. It looks rather desolate, but it's also hilarious. This could be a great craft for your guests to make and take. Another theme I have seen at Halloween parties is to have unusual items displayed in glass jars. The blog Craft Your Happiness shows how to make those old-timey looking jars called cloches or bell jars, but these are made from recycled clear two-liter soda bottles. Inside the jars, they displayed items like pretend dragon eggs or bird models or other creepy items. In my episode on the creative reuse of prescription bottles, I shared a Halloween craft that is a potions bottle. This is a great reuse of small bottles like those used for medications like Tylenol or other aspirin, that kind of thing, and involves using a glue gun to add words like poison or eye of newt, and then you paint over that three-dimensional words with layers of paint to make it look old. 
In my episode on the creative reuse of glass jars, I talked about making lanterns with silhouettes of Halloween scenes. You paint the jar orange or cover it with orange tissue paper and then add a black silhouette. The blog called Le Coin de Mel shows silhouette designs that you could borrow. Now, when I was a tween, I liked to do cross-stitching. I found a cute craft by Martha Stewart Living, which involves cross-stitch skeletons made with glow-in-the-dark thread. That skeleton cross-stitch is actually very cute, and another cute Halloween decoration are pom-poms that look like eyeballs. The Mr. P blog has a very helpful tutorial that shows you how to make them. It also shows how to make a skull pom-pom, but that looks beyond my skill level. This is a great way to use up yarn bits. So thank you for listening. I would love to hear what you think about making Halloween decorations from recycled materials at trashimagination at gmail.com. Until next time, may you decorate for Halloween with lots of recycled materials. (laughs) 